In this our 21st century, religious practice, especially Judeo-Christian, is not a strong identifier within our culture. Sure, there are those who are pious and regularly attend mass, church, chapel or synagogue. But if you think you were to think about a colour that was part of the palette of society of today, religious practice and behaviour would not be a primary one. In early 19th century, and in fact right through the 19th century, quite the opposite was taking place. It's important to note the role that religious practice played in that time and how it, it informed all levels of society, all modes of behaviour, all motivations for crime and a host of other aspects of the culture of that time. I'm Michael Bischel, Australian historical fiction writer and today we are presenting one of the most controversial characters of the 19th century Sydney, early to mid. He was Samuel Marsden, a preacher, a man of the cloth and a man passionate about his fears and views on life, on this life and the next. Marsden was a complex man, well-meaning at times, like trying to separate fat from meat, it's difficult and challenging to try and separate the priest from the politician. Because Marsden was a politician and a strong influencer of events in New South Wales. Now like John MacArthur, the Reverend Samuel Marsden came to Sydney in the primitive period of 1795. Like John MacArthur, he was active against Governor Macquarie and his largesse in building the new colony, according to Marsden. In 1822, Marsden's hard work and endeavour had paid off. He lived on his 7,500 acres of land at Parramatta and had many animals under husbandry. He had done well being the son of a blacksmith and now the chaplain to the colony of New South Wales. Having had the ears of the exclusives and their excellencies, Governors King and Bly. Now, on the 28th of April 1822, he had turned 50, much like MacArthur, I guess, same age, and was still incensed and concerned about the depravity in New South Wales and how he could at least stem its tide of damnation for those souls in Sydney. His credo was simple. Those convicts could be rescued from their various crimes and deeds by the severity of punishment. It sounds cruel today and quite unbelievable, but that's today, not early 19th century Sydney. Now, Governor Brisbane restored Samuel Marsden to his role as magistrate, which pleased the Reverend very highly. But to matters of religion, it must be remembered that many convicts coming into New South Wales were Catholic. And other than Father Terry, there was not the same hierarchy of senior Catholic clergy in Sydney compared with the Protestant, as the latter was the core of the government. Marsden was emphatic that only the Protestant religion and all things that informed it and sprang from it was the only true religion. And Papists, read Catholics, were an abomination. Now look, Lord Bathurst understood the difficulties and potential conflicts that could arise if there were not some recognition of the Catholic faith in New South Wales. There were steps taken by Governors Brisbane, Darling and Burke to at least put into effect places of worship where Catholics could profess their faith. But all this was anathema to Marsden. In researching evidence of the Jewish faith, <laughs> I'm loath to comment on the prejudice and hatred that existed by a large majority of people of New South Wales to the Jews. Uh, even historic, historic evidence is just too brutal and too highly controversial even to refer to it now. Yet it was history in any event and that's how people spoke. And yet Marsden wasn't the chief cocky of the Protestant Church in New South Wales. Lord Bathurst appointed one T.H. Scott to be head of the church in New South Wales as Archdeacon on a salary of £2,000 a year in 1823. Now Marsden also had to contend with the Reverend Broughton, William Grant, who in 1829 took over the office of Archdeacon of the Colony from Scott. So, Marsden, the Reverend, the Priest, the Holy Man, the Magistrate and the influencer, influencer of events in New South Wales was religious to his bootstraps. And the second video of this controversial man, we will look at his political manoeuvrings, 
his naive understanding of human nature and his continuing wealth creation. All of which was another colourful patch in this quilt of early colonial New South Wales. I'm Michael Bischel. Now let's move on to another video in this exciting series of 19th century.